Hi guys. Um, I wanted to share something with you. So I was in, um, devotional when I woke up this morning. So like just reading and, um, asking God to speak because I need it. I need God to speak. I'm, um, we all get hit. We all have hard times and trials and tribulations. <clears throat> so I was seeking the Lord. And I turned to Matthew chapter 9. And I was reading. I was reading chapter 8, chapter 9. And then I got to a part that really blessed me. And I think I just saw it more with new eyes, like with my heart more. And I've always liked this um, part in the Bible, but I've just seen it differently today. And I'd like to share it with you. So, um, we're in Matthew chapter nine, uh, just four verses, I believe is where I'm going. Okay. Um, Jesus is following the centurion that, um, came about his dead daughter, um, and said, you know, please come. Cause I know if you come lay hands on her, then she will awake. Okay, so Jesus rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, so then in verse 20. Sorry, it's going to really get to me because it's. Um, I hope this blesses a lot. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Okay, first thing I got on that was so many people go, but the Bible's written by men. How can it be so trustworthy? The Bible's written by men. How do they know? But when, okay, fine, they have scrolls to tell them what happened and the flood and they have this and that. But, but how do they know what people said and what they did and remember this perfectly? It's just their perception. They've got to have things wrong, right? And, and that's what a lot of people like to try and say. But this is a living word of God. And I've heard this story since I was a little girl. But you can read this book. You can read this book daily. And all day long, God will speak into your situations. And he'll speak. It is living it is alive and he is guiding and helping you through your life with it so he puts it throughout here how do we know this how do we know people say that the bible's written um, with the inspiration of the holy spirit which is god right god the father god the son and god the holy ghost right so the holy spirit comes and lives in you when you're when you're sealed with him because you believe in Jesus Christ, that he's the son of God. Okay. And that he rose again the third day. So, okay. So they say that this word is inspired by the Holy ghost that it, yes, it took men's hands to write it, but the Holy ghost was God was bringing things up in them. And telling them what to write. <clears throat> so, 
Let's read verse 21 again. Matthew 9, verse 21. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Within herself. She didn't tell anyone. Uh, who can hear that? Who hears you? Who knows all your thoughts and your innermost secrets and who knows you in and out? God. God knows you in and out and he knows your heart. He knows your thoughts. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be at whole. God knew what she said, just like he saw, was it Nathaniel under the, the tree, the fig tree, before he came to him? Okay, but God knew what she said. And they wrote it that way in the Bible, for she said within herself. Because she was probably thinking it really hard. I know, I know, I know I'll be healed. I know I'll be healed. This will go away. I know he's the son of God. I know. I just, I just got to touch. I just got to touch his him. I just got, I just got to touch it. God knew that. The Holy Spirit told them to put it that way in the Bible. He knows your inner most thoughts and he knows your heart and your, he's with you. He just knows your days and your hours and your minutes and your seconds. And he cares about all of them. He cares about all of them. He's never too busy. Even the most minute things that you think he doesn't care about, he cares He just wants you to talk about him and come to him, give it to him, talk to him about it. Even if you think, how do I, this is so silly. How do I burden him with this? He says, burden me. I love you. So then it goes on and says, but Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, this is the woman. When Jesus saw her, he said, daughter. He called her daughter already, right? He called her daughter. We are sons and daughters. When we come to Jesus, we come to God through Jesus. We are sons and daughters. He calls us children, his children. Okay, you, also, you know, Jesus calls us friends, but he calls us children. He said, daughter. Be of good comfort. That's why Jesus said, I, I am. I am God. I am. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Okay. But Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour her faith in Jesus made her whole. Her faith in Jesus made her whole. We have faith that he died on the cross and did what he said he did. And that because we believe he's the son of God, that our sins are covered, past, present, future, and that he's coming back for us. Because he, he rose again. He arose. His whole body, he arose. His whole body went to heaven. And that we will be taken that, that same way when he comes back for us. Because we have faith in him. Daughter, be of good cheer. Thy faith hath made thee whole. How are we whole? We're whole in Jesus. When we come to him, he makes us a new creation, a new vessel. Chapter 9, verse 17, okay, or 16. No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, 
For that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. So the rest is made worse. You're not going to put new cloth on an old garment. 17. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Both are preserved. When you come to Jesus, you're made a new creation. You're made a new wine vessel. You're made a new vessel. He says, I'm making you a new creation, a new man or woman, men, you know, men, okay? And the new wine comes flooding in. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the seal, seal to the day of redemption, redemption when he comes for you. So you're in heaven with him, okay? That's the new wine. That's the Holy Spirit coming in. We have to be new creations because can you imagine? Oh, I'm going to do a whole thing on this one. I'll, I'll do it later because so this doesn't get too long. But can you imagine God coming and living like he says? God comes and lives in you. You're now the temple of God. God comes and lives in you. You've got to new, be a new creation to be able to hold God, to be able to hold the power of God. Or, okay? Lest the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish. The bottles would perish. We would die. But they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. The Holy Spirit comes into us. He seals us. And we're preserved until we're with Jesus. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Let me tell you the, the power. I mean, I know we see it. We've seen it on movies. We've seen it. Jesus is walking in a crowd and the crowd's pushing and shoving like groupies. They're all touching and pulling and wanting a piece of him, like a groupie. Yeah, I know Jesus. Yeah, I know Jesus. That's why I tell my kids like, yeah, I know Jesus. Um, just kind of like you say, yeah, I know that movie star. I saw him. You don't know that movie star. You're not his family. You're not his best friend. You're not nothing. You're a groupie. Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? You know, I tell you, I never knew you. You never came to me. I was a groupie. You were a groupie. You just, it says a lot of people fell away when they had to follow him. They left him. Okay, they walked away. The groupies walk away. But in that crowd, digging through it, Maybe at the ground, trying to get through everyone's legs, trying to reach her hand out because she's she's just saying, he's God, he's the son of God, he's, he's my savior, he can do it, no one else can, he can do it. And her little fingers reach out and touch the hem and she, she touches it. And out of all that pushing and shoving and touching that was going on when he's trying to walk to this house. He fills. He feels his power touching someone. He feels one of his sheep coming to him. He feels his around him. And all the strangers that aren't his, he feels his lost sheep reaching out for him and touching him, just touching him, touching him. And his love overflowing and the power and the Holy Spirit just. Whew. He felt her faith. He knew his. I know mine and mine know me. Mine hear my voice. I leave the 99 for the one. He felt the, the sheep reaching out for him. He felt his sheep. She was coming to him. 
out of all the other ones that were touching him and grabbing and wanting a piece of him, she was his. Her heart was his. I sat there and lingered on that for a little while. And I started singing. A song came up to me and I started singing. Um, I don't know all the words, but draw me close to you. Never let me go. And lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. No one else will do. And I was singing that, and I usually sing that song when I sing it to God. I'm like, I'm going to lay down the world and lay it all down again just to be close to you. He never leaves us, but just to be close to you. And all of a sudden, his love started singing it to me. And I heard that song in a whole new way that I'd never heard it before. It's him singing it. Listen to it from Jesus. Draw me close to you. Seek him. Never let me go. Don't let Jesus go. I lay it all down again. He laid down his life again for you to hear you say that I'm your friend. He calls us friends. You are my desire. He desires you with a love that you will not know. No one else will do. No one else will do. He runs after you. He loves you. He loves you. The Bible <clears throat> is like rules for life to help us through life so we don't stumble and hurt or die fleshy. Like things can kill us and he doesn't, he wants, he wants good, but we already go through trials and tribulations. We're going to go through them and suffer, but he helps us through life. He walks with us. But this is also a love story. The whole Bible, the whole Bible is a love story from God. You can see Jesus from the first chapter to the end. It's all his love story to you. It's his love letters. God loved you that he gave his son so you could be his again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He gave me a vision. I think it was maybe May 2023. I was laying in bed and I wasn't asleep yet. I wasn't asleep at all. But he showed me everything kind of went dark and I saw a figure, like a body, like a whole body standing, but I didn't see the form like male, female. I didn't see anything, just a form. And 
it was he was telling me that when someone gets saved this is what it looks like when you call on him when you believe this is what it looks like and he showed me the holy spirit coming in like a blue electric fire and it was streams like whoa, whoa, whoa. like and he was streaming back and forth back and forth whoa, 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 whoa. And he was streaming back and forth from the chest, like where the heart is, to the underneath the belly button, like the bowels, like your belly. Okay. And he was streaming back and forth. And I knew that he was cleansing. He was making new. He was cleansing. And it was just blue electric flame, electricity moving fast just through through the body through the body and um i knew he was cleansing he was making your new creation and he was sealing that person for jesus choose jesus he loves you